In this video, we're going to do an evaluation of the solar system that is in the E-Pro, Geo-Pro line of campers. And we're going to check to see if, in fact, there is enough solar to do what you want to do or if you need to add some. This will depend on your area and what your needs are, but we will examine both those and have an evaluation at the end of what you might need. We will start off with a evaluation of my particular needs which is an average two-day boondocking outing and we we're going to try to check up to see if that will actually work for us in a particular system that we have in our FD model and it is a 2020 so it has the 100 watt solar panel and we did disconnect our power from the car so we're going to start off and see what we're doing with, with our power since we're going to go off grid for two days so we're going to get an idea where we're at to start with so like i say i just unplugged i'm going to go in here and check our check what we got it's like we're starting with about 88 percent on the battery not sure why it's run down a little bit because we've been hooked to the car but we'll see how that holds up and check that that percentage in the morning is 88 percent and voltage is 12.8 and we're drawing in a little over uh, barely even a half an amp right now off the solar panel so our percentage dropped to 79 percent last night and actually there's sun sun is up now and it's actually already charged back up to 87 percent so uh let's go over here and see how much solar panels almost picking up a full amp right now so uh, as the Sun comes up we'll start charging our batteries again and we used a few lights last night we left the pump on for our water which kicked on as we used the bathroom and uh, other than that we we didn't have a whole whole lot on inside we didn't run the heater last night Electric blanket. and we did run a electric blanket for a little bit but only for probably about 10-15 minutes just to kind of cool warm it, warm it up surprisingly enough uh, once the uh, sun came up this morning we're bumped back up to two two and a half amps of solar charging and it, it took our batteries all the way up to 100 percent from from about 79 that it was last night so it went up really fast and uh just goes to show if you are you got solar running you can you can use some things quite a bit but if you're just running strictly off of the battery it does run down a little bit say so we started last night I think it was like 89% and went down to 79 that's without any solar so just something to check out so we're uh, gonna be doing another night of uh, of off-grid tomorrow tonight so we'll see how that works out we'll give you the beginning and the end of our how much juice we have so we kind of learned our lesson the first night by parking in the shade so tonight or day we, we went out we parked in the sun so we got a full solar charge it was already almost 100 percent when we left to go for our drive around the day and then we got back it was at 100 percent so we're starting tonight with 100 percent solar and uh we'll see how well it works we're not we're going to be a little more uh a little more using of it this tonight we may use a few lights and turn on a few things last night we were a little scared we were going to run low so we'll see how it goes and we'll let you know what the what the uh, charge is in the morning So we're starting on 100%. We just disconnected the hitch and we still have to put our awning down so that'll probably draw it down a little bit. We are currently drawing in a little over one amps on our solar. It's kind of overcast a little bit with some tree cover. So after a full night running a few lights, the water pump and a fan on the second high speed also had an electric blanket on for a little bit uh, we were down to 65 percent and we should be pulling up some, some uh, solar soon because the sun's already out and yeah, we're already pulling in one amp of solar so 
that's just a rough idea of what we did with our solar and it seems like it's running pretty good another thing we did run is we had our our uh, we boost uh, system for our uh, our cell phones that also ran off the 12 volt I ran that all night long as you can see here we're still at 65 percent we've been running some things this morning a couple of lights and everything we do have some solar coming in you'll see we got only about a half an amp coming in right now so hopefully they'll charge back up so we can get the awning back up if not we can hook it up to the car and have extra juice all right just all right just letting you know we're continuing our our uh, solar checkout we went all the way down to 60 percent we now have about a half amp coming in from the solar it's now back up to 65 and gradually climbing up and uh it seems to be that was the low point was a 60 percent and going by my chart it's actually was a higher voltage on my chart it actually showed it was about 70 percent of that 12.32 is what i was actually getting when it was at 60 percent so probably could even go lower i'm not sure how accurate this reader reading is but uh once we turned off some lights and things we're still running our we boost system off of that and then a light right here but it's starting to climb back up and we'll be taking in our um, awning here in a little bit so just letting you know that that awning does take a lot of juice i was sitting at about 65 percent and it drew down the 59 as I'm, i was pulling the awning in it's back up to 60. i guess the main thing is is having enough power to bring that thing up but then make sure you uh it, it generates back up after a while it'll, it'll gain back up of course it's it's gaining about one about half amp off the solar right now but uh actually just went back up again to 64 so it goes up pretty fast but it definitely draws it down when you pull that awning in and if you're really worried about that you can hook it up to your car and draw some power out of your car battery as well so not a big deal just wanted to let you know about that in the end came to the conclusion that we do have enough solar system in our particular camper to get us by here in the eastern united states uh, there's really no need to add for us because we only stay out about two days at a time. The tanks alone will not sustain uh, more liquid. So it, it actually two days, maybe three tops boondocking is what we do here in the eastern United States. There's a lot of cost involved in actually adding a more solar. But if you lived west of the Mississippi River, that may be a consideration you might want to take. Because there you'll have the boondocking opportunities and BLM land areas that you may camp a lot more than where we're where I'm particularly at. If you live out west or you have the opportunity to stay anywhere for up to a week you'll want to look at other options. One option you want to look at is if you're going to rerun the air conditioner. If you run the air conditioner you have to have a generator, a good size generator that are pretty pricey and they're very noisy. If you go with a smaller generator like the Honda generators they're quiet, but then you have to have the uh, you have to have the soft start for your uh, air conditioning to keep that from pulling too much juice. Another option is you can look at the on the side solar. The only problem you have with the on the side solar is that it's an expensive package that is just sitting on the ground when you're not there. If you're not at the camp all the time, you might want to worry about security on that. And the only other thing you can do is add a a, a couple of panels to the system which that can be pretty pricey but that's something that's more permanent and but you do have to worry about drilling holes in my case the cost and the risk of drilling a hole in the top of my camper is not worth it to me at this point and that's about all I have for now so uh, you have had any comments on this particular test that I did uh, leave it in the comments and we'll see you again on an, another one of our videos